one is due time for breakthrough, next level breakthrough. And I believe that will be you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'd like to congratulate you for what you are hearing. It is a hearing ear that gives birth to a doing heart. And God is committed to everyone that is a doer of his word. And the distinction we see among men is a product of God's commitment. So I know your less level of breakthrough is in view. Because you are giving it what it takes and God is honoring his word. The Lord bless you. The Lord prosper you. The Lord guide you. The Lord slow down your enemies. Amen. The Lord blocked the path of your enemies. Amen. Every arrow intended towards you this morning, yes, I send it back to sender, back to hell, Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. And I say to someone this morning that the help of God is just right at the doorstep Amen. of your house. The help of God. Amen. The help of God. Amen. The help of God is the secret of every man exploit. Amen. That help will locate you, will locate me Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We've been looking at divine provision for our next breakthrough level divine provision and we've been exploring this verse of scripture first corinthians chapter 10 and verse number 13 say any temptation you face will be not in you i'm reading from voice translation he said but god is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond what you can handle. So God has weighed our energy and weighed that opposing factor. And he said, look, you can handle what is happening. All you need to do is to engage <coughs> wisdom. David said, uh, sorry, Solomon said, He that handled a matter wisely shall find good. So it is the handling, the perspective that we hold when we are at a crossroad to our next level of breakthrough that matters, that determine the, out the, the, the outcome. No wonder God said to Moses, The see, I have made you God unto Pharaoh. Pharaoh is determined to stop you. I have also programmed you to overcome Pharaoh. But you need to see it. You need to see it. You need to hold that perspective. It is not the weapon that determines the outcome of a battle. In most cases, it's the handler of the weapon. So God said, I acknowledge the temptation, but my faithfulness has made provision in you, not outside. And, and you have to get that. My, 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 you have to get this part right. In you, God said He is faithful, and He will not let you and I be tempted above what we can handle. Above what we can handle. 
Now, when you look at um, the later part of this scripture, it says, but he always provides a way of escape that you will be able to endure and keep moving forward. You will be able to endure and at the same time keep moving forward. Keep ascending diversity of level of breakthrough. So God acknowledges the barrier. God acknowledges commitment, his faithfulness. God acknowledges our makeup in his hand. And then God also acknowledge our breakthrough at the end of the journey. You see those things. What God have not lived in denial of the presence of barrier, obstacle, temptation, limitation, name them all. God acknowledge their presence. God also acknowledge that look whatever is before you is a common thing and then he acknowledged his faithfulness his steadfast and loyalty and commitment to your success and then he went further that look i have made you in such a way that Whatever the enemy, you know, Isaiah put it very well. He said, no weapon, all the weapon of the devil, the one he may unleash to keep you at a status quo. The Bible says, your makeup forbid their, 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 their efficiency. Your makeup will negate your makeup as long it is fashioned against you. Your maker, there is something inside you that can render that weapon useless. We need to know that. We need to know that. No weapon formed against you. It may prosper in other people's life. That's why we don't use what happened to others, a yardstick to what will happen to us especially when it is negative. But look at what he said. He said, he will not let you be tempted beyond what you can handle. What you can handle. So whatever is in my front right now that look taller than me, on the inside, I have what it takes to handle it. No wonder what makes a man is always, is always about 80% of inspiration. Inspiration. Job talking, he said, the inspiration of the Almighty give them understanding. So our victory begins with our inner man and our losses begin with the position or, or, or uh, with the deposition of our in a man. So it's not what comes outside in most cases that actually defile a man. It is what comes from inside the man. Inside the man. The whole Israel felt they were being held hostage by Goliath and his men. But there was a man whose inside rejected that conclusion. In fact, the man asked, what shall be done to a man that conquered this Goliath? That's, what the, that's the question David asked. Other people see a barrier. David saw a breakthrough. That means it is not a function of their physical eyes. It is a function of the content of the heart. So enrich your heart to enrich your placement on earth. Enrich your heart with God's provision for your success to enrich yourself on the earth. Like I was saying in the last episode, today you don't hear believers talking about the place of long-suffering. 
long suffering. We don't hear that. We don't hear people talk about long suffering. And when you look at Galatians chapter 5 and verse number 22, Galatians chapter 5 and verse number 22, he said, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering long suffering now when you talk about long, long suffering you are <coughs> you are excuse me you are talking about uh showing patience in spite of trouble especially trouble caused by other factors attacking trouble that's where you talk about long suffering now it's a long suffering ability to endure and be patient for a long time is in us the fruit of the spirit so the seed the ability to endure till god come true for you is part of the package of the Holy Spirit on your inside. And you bring that forth, that forth fruit, when you exhibit it. Because nothing happens instant and at the same time durable. The doing of the Lord endureth forever, but it does not appear, in most cases, suddenly. It always a build up. A builder I will not give you the city at once I will give you little by little although the way when, when Pharaoh let the people go God did not lead them through the ways of the Philistine although that was near but God said paradventure when they see war they will turn back they will turn back they will turn back then it will make God have done zero work. Can you imagine if they turn back and go back to Egypt? So God have a systematic way of building capacity, you know, because we cannot be more blessed than our capacity. So that is where long suffering comes in, which people don't talk about right now. We just want everything instant. And I'm telling you the truth, I lie not, it cannot be always instant and durable. No. No. Because the enemy we are dealing with is a he goat. We saw what he did to Jesus. After he tempted him, the Bible says, he departed for a season. The Bible tells us that when a demon is casted out, he moved away. And went to look for other seven demons and returned. So God ensures sometimes certain things are delayed, certain measure of suffering kind of comes against you to build tenacity in us, to build resilience in us. Because all these are required when your breakthrough is near. When your breakthrough is near. Even the Bible tells you that Satan knows that his days are short. And therefore, in the last day, he will do more wickedly. Many people have thrown in the tower of their breakthrough at the verge, or, or let me say, at the verge of their time. Many have thrown in the breakthrough. You, 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 you had what he saw said. Esau was just about to pick his bad tribe. But he said, no, I cannot. I'm dying. You, have, you hear people say, I'm dying. That means death has not come, really. You are the one manufacturing it. I am finished. That means you have not finished. You are just at the eve 
of your breakthrough. You are the one manufacturing it by your alterers. I pray for someone online the courage to pick the battle afresh because you are right at the eve of your miracle. I pray for that strength for someone. You know, you know, you know, when Peter was about to hit his breakthrough, you know what Jesus said to him? He said, Trust in a little, a little, a little, just trust in a little. And suddenly, that little became the catalyst for, for Peter's major next level of breakthrough. He was just giving up, holding his net. I don't know what you have been doing for long, and it looks like you are giving up. This morning, I have come to encourage it. I have learned, having privilege standing by those who break stones, with a with sledgehammer, those who make gravel manually. You know, when you pick a stone and you are hitting it, the first time you hit the stone, in most cases, if it is a smaller pieces, it will jump from your reach. You have to follow it to where it is, or you pick, bring it back. And if it is a bigger one, when you hit it, he actually gives you an attitude by bouncing your, your sledgehammer. That I'm not aware of what you are doing. But as you persist, as you persist, it will, it will, if it will take 20 times for the rock to give up, it is the last one that pieces it. But in actual sense, it's a cumulative effort of many attempts that got the breakthrough. Don't give up. It is not over until a child of God is declared as a winner. You will surely win. He say, he that goeth forth weeping with his sheep, where we with his seed, so his seed shall doubtless come back with his sheep on his shoulder. There is a breakthrough for you. Oh, yes, God said that in, in, in a voice translation, he said that you may keep moving forward. There is a place called forwardness for you, there is a place called advancement for someone, there is a place that is better than where I am and where you are. And God is taking us there. Amen. And I see you right there in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now look at First Peter. I love First Peter. First uh, Peter chapter 5. First Peter chapter 5. Somebody miracle is just knocking right at the door. Amen. It will not elude you. Amen. This time around, you will cash it, you will share it as a testimony. Now look at what he said. First Peter chapter 5 and verse 10. He said, But God of all grace, who had called us unto eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, a while. You see, that a while is the bridge between you and your next level of breakthrough. He said, number one, in the course of suffering, make you perfect. And you know, God will always demand a perfection of his people before explosion of their breakthrough. You remember Abraham? He said, walk thou before me and be thou perfect. I want you to be suitable for what I want to do. And you don't become suitable like a park, like a walk in the park, it's always a wilderness experience. It's always a challenge of your capacity. Make you perfect. So what you are going through, the delay you are experiencing, are raw material for your perfection for the establishment of your next level of breakthrough. Make you perfect, establish, strengthen, set to you. Deliver into your hand what you are due for. I, I love the way um, voice translation also coins it out. It says, I want to read that for us now. After ye have suffered for a while, for a little while, 
the God of grace who has called you to his everlasting presence through Jesus, the anointed, will restore you, support you, strengthen you, and grant you. You become a grand ruler. A grand, you become a guru in what you are doing. That's what God does. That's what God does. So this morning, I plead with you, don't give up on yourself. Don't give up on yourself. When it looks like you have nothing to offer, I've learned to anybody in any situation, it's actually your eve or the eve of your miracle. We saw that in our Lord Jesus Christ. When you read Luke chapter 22, from verse 40 to 42 thereabout, you will discover that when his hour was come, and when his hour came, he was giving up. He was giving up because he prayed an emotional prayer there. He said, Lord, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me now. When you miss the cup, you will miss the wine. Remove this cup with me. Then he quickly said, but not my will, but thy will be done. And the Bible says, and the angels appear and strengthen him. And there appear an angel unto him from heaven. Help came from heaven. Help of God is coming for someone hearing me right now. Amen. Where you least expect it. And they came. And that when that came, and there appeared an angel to him from heaven and strengthening him and strengthening him. And at the end of the day, we were told he was crowned. You also will be crowned. Mm -hmm. Your expectation will not disappear to a thin air. Mm -hmm. You will handle the outcome of the, uh, of the trophy of this conflict mm -hmm. that you are in. Your next breakthrough is real. Your next breakthrough is real. Don't give up. Don't give up. It takes a stretch to spread. It takes a stretch to spread. It takes a stretch to spread. If he's stretching you, it's because it's about to spread you. Don't give up. Don't give up. You are just developing stamina, muscle, spiritual muscle to handle the blessing. Don't give up. When it looks like you're about to break down, it is an indicator that your breakthrough, Satan can no longer stop it. I pray for you this morning, as I pray for myself, that God will say to you, that's why I say, be you follower of them, who through faith and patient endure. There is what to endure. There is, if you must enter into a new thing, there is always what to endure. There is no land full of milk and honey that had no protector. You know, when God promised the children of Israel, he told them, I'm taking you to a land of milk and honey. So, so sweet word. But as soon as they departed, they met the Jebusite, the Amorite, the Canaanite. But you see, testimony had it that, the, that Caleb and Joshua entered the promised land. What was their secret? God said, this one has followed me wholly. Shift your eyes from the impossibility. Begin to look at God who said with him, all things are possible. So all I need to do is to keep him around me. Is to keep him around him. He said, he said with men, some things are impossible. He said, but not with God. So all I need to do is to keep God around me. Is to keep God around me. Why must I keep God around me? God has one attribute that I want you to go with today. There is something that is known with God in all generations. And what is that thing? He's a way maker. Devil is a way blocker. Jesus is a way maker. He's a way maker. So I need to keep him. So that when I'm about to be stranded, he makes way for me. <laughs> he makes way for me. When you look at Isaiah chapter 
42, there are many of them. You see God introduce himself to his people that, look, I am a way maker. I need to be with you. You need to organize and keep me with you. Now, if you look at verse Isaiah 42, verse 16, Isaiah 42 and verse 16, it says, And I will bring the blind by a way that they knew not. You know, that is almost impossible. But God said, he can do that. He can do that. I will lead them in part that they have not known. I will make darkness light before them. And crooked things straight, this thing will I do unto them and not forsake them. I will make the crooked part straight. Now, if you book a bit to Isaiah chapter 43, you will see the same. Isaiah chapter 43. He said, Thus said the Lord, verse 16, Thus said the Lord, which make a way in the sea and a part in the mighty water. That's why he said in Isaiah, at the beginning of that chapter, verse 43, look at what he said. He said, but now thus said the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. When thou passest through the water, I will be with thee, and through the, the river, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be born, neither shall the flame can do upon thee. Why? Because he's a way maker. It is not what you are going through that is overwhelming you. It is the absence of the way maker. That's, that, that, that's where the problem. That's why the apostles have amazing record of unbelievable testimony. Why? He said, and the Lord went with them. And the Lord went with them, confirming their word with signs and wonder. Acts chapter 10, verse 13, how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, and he went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, and the Lord was with him. So here is the, is the practice shot for today. What effort are you making to ensure you secure the presence of God? I know one that you are doing by coming online to seek his face, by coming to worship him this morning, by coming on this platform. Already information is already coming to you. And you know God information is the end of the deformation of an attacker. He sent his word and his word delivered them. He sent his word and his word bring healing and deliver them from their destroyer. God is a way maker. God is a way maker. That's how he introduced himself. That's how he introduced himself. If you listen to him in verse 19 of the same chapter, he said, Behold, I will do a new thing. I will give you the next desired level of breakthrough. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and river in the desert. I will make a way in the wilderness. So this your wilderness is not the final. Failure is never final even if you have failed before. Failure is never final. I will make a way in the desert. I pray today that as we get involved, as we reinvented a new ideas, as we tell ourselves over and over, I am born to succeed. Others are winning. Why not me? And why not now? As we reassure ourselves, remember, he said, God is faithful. And faithfulness simply means loyalty and steadfastness. And he vowed he will not forsake you. I see God helping you to just do the little bit that you need to do. And part of the little bit, number one, is to keep on making sure that you hold the right perspective of your person. Don't let any situation redefine you. But you redefine every situation. God bless you and prosper you. It is a thing of joy for me that I am privileged to bring the gospel to your doorstep. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord prosper you. Even as we are in the mood of thanksgiving. Wherever you are, 
we are almost getting to the first half of this year. Thanksgiving will always unlock the unlockable doors, mm -hmm. including unlockable grave. Mm -hmm. The grave of Lazarus open at Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. That grave of that disease you have been diagnosed. It doesn't matter. It could be cancer. Yes. I see God as you lift up your hand intentionally and consciously thanking him for bringing you to the half of this year. I tell you, he will come and take the thanks. Mm -hmm. And as he comes, he abide with you yet more and walk you through the remaining six months. We are celebrating God's faithfulness in the first half of the year 2023. Join us as we gather. Right now, the program is on starting today in Mombasa and uh, Nairobi. Please connect and join and be part of it. Wherever you are on the highway as you are driving, just keep on saying, Father, I thank you. It's a very few words that causes heaven over you to be open. The Lord bless you. Don't forget to join us in the evening at 5.45 and uh, the service will be on. Great men of God will be speaking to us. Pastor Johnson from, uh, from Uganda, uh, Bishop Atembo from Nairobi. I will be there and other great servants of God will also be there. Please, wherever you are, don't mind what is not working. Thank him for what is working. And suddenly, what is not working will be infected with supernatural power and it will begin to work. The Lord bless you. In case you have been listening to me, you are not born again. You don't know Jesus as your Lord yet as a Savior. There is always a place to start. Start by having Jesus and inviting Jesus into your life. Invite Jesus today into your life. And when you do that, that will end all the crises the keys of the kingdom begin to fall into your hand one after the other. And you begin to open many doors in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you are there and you say, Pastor, I want you to pray for me. I'm ready right now. Say after me, Lord Jesus, thank you for today. I am a sinner, but today I come unto you. Forgive me my sin and my trespasses. I believe in my heart that you are the Son of God, that Jesus, you died and you rose from the grave for the atonement of my sin and for the privilege to be called a citizen of heaven. Thank you, Father. I subscribe to the perfect work of Calvary, and my sins are renounced. I'm born again. A new me have suddenly emerged. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name. Now, if you have prayed this prayer, the contact on the screen, that's my contact. You can always get in touch with us. And the next one is the physical address of our place of worship in different city and different location. If we are close to you, please find it pleasurable to fellowship with us. And let us know when you are in. We'll be glad to have a wonderful fellowship with you. And in case we are far away from you, please look for a Bible-believing church. You've just prayed a prayer of confession. You are now born again. Look for a Bible-believing church. And then begin to fellowship with them and let them know what you have done today, the prayer we have just prayed, let them know you have done that and you will be guided. God bless you and prosper you. I congratulate everyone who have arrived for the half of the year Thanksgiving in Nairobi already and wherever you are, maybe you are on the way, you're coming into the city of Nairobi shall be a coming in into another dimension of blessing. Be blessed of God. Supernatural provision and protection. It's already available to you. Just wait patiently and follow and God will bring you right into the midst of this program. God bless you and prosper you. Nice seeing you and talking to you on this platform. In Jesus' precious name. The rest of us, let's worship the Lord with our substance. Let's worship God with our offering. As you leave that offering, and I pray, Heavenly Father, accept our offering this morning. Use it for the advancement of your kingdom. And let everyone experience your abundance in Jesus' precious name. Don't forget to share this broadcast. And for also, because of the midday, uh, because of the great meeting that is happening in Nairobi, the midday uh, prayer service will not hold today the midday prayer service, the travail of Hannah, 
will not be there today to enable you prepare adequately and be right in the service with us at from 545. God bless you as you go through the day. Be blessed. Kindly note the starting point to breakthrough classes and break.